Hello everyone and welcome to our Arsenal talk on Tracy, a Linux malware tracing and forensics tool using the eBPF technology. I'm Idan Revivo and with us we have Yaniv Agman and we are excited to share with you this tool today. Tracy can help you perform dynamic analysis of Linux malware, automatically collect the forensics artifact and also speed up the reversing process. A quick intro about us, I'm Idan, I lead the Aqua Security Research Team, Team Nautilus, where we focus on security research on cloud native environments. The team's mission is to uncover new threats and attacks that targets containers, Kubernetes, serverless, and the public cloud infrastructure by developing new methods and tools to address them. Before joining Aqua, I managed the IBM Frostier mobile malware research team, mostly focusing on mobile financial malware. I am also the author of CuckooDroid, the first open source Android sandbox for analyzing Android malware. I'm Yaniv, a security researcher at Aqua Security. My previous experience includes designing and developing security solutions for Linux containers, leading runtime functionality development, including binaries instrumentation and system tracing. Before that, I worked as a Linux kernel developer of embedded systems. In today's agenda, we'll talk about why we build Tracy. We're going to do a nice overview on the tools itself. We're going to look at some examples and use cases for Tracy. We're going to analyze a multi-stage malware. We're going to write some tools with Tracy. And then we're going to see what's next for us on our roadmap. In today's demo, we are going to analyze a real multi-stage malware that was found inside Docker Hub public repository. We will go over the different stages of malware and start from unpacking the binary into memory using fileless execution techniques, decrypting a secondary payload to disk, and finally unpack the executed tsunami malware from memory. That's we'll see how using Tracy can help us to get through all those evasion techniques and get the actual malicious payload with zero reversing. Let's talk a little bit about the motivation behind writing Tracy. We wanted to be able to analyze container images on a large scale and to find malicious images in an automatic fashion, basically scanning the entire Docker Hub. After investigating some real attacks that were found in the, our honeypot, we realized that the attackers are leveraging static evasion techniques exactly like they're doing in other operating systems. So static analysis just not going to be enough. For example, we saw Base64 encoded payload inside the shell script only when running the container, the payload would be extracted and executed in runtime. And that's enough to bypass most pattern-based AV scanners. We then looked for a way to trace the container execution and capture suspicious artifacts. As current advanced Linux malware can use anti-analysis techniques, we needed a stealth solution which doesn't change the container file system or process memory. We also wanted to have a full system visibility in runtime by tracing not only the system calls but other interesting OS events as well. Now let's hear from Yaniv about Tracy and its underlying technology. Yaniv. Thanks, Idan. So after we understood what we were looking for, we started to look for a suitable way to implement this. There are several technologies in Linux for tracing a process or a group of processes in runtime. But before talking about the pros and cons of each technology, here is a quick introduction of the eBPF components. Eventually, eBPF, eBPF is a virtual machine running in the kernel, which has its own instruction set and registers. Before any code can run in the BPF virtual machine, it first gets verified by the BPF verifier, and if passed, it gets JIT compiled to native code. An eBPF program can be written in user space just as a regular C program, but has some restrictions. For example, to read the value of a pointer to memory, it is necessary to use a special BPF helper function. After loading a BPF program into the kernel, it can be attached to an event such as kprob, uprob, or tracepoint. When the event happens, it triggers the BPF program, which can interact with the user space using green buffer and maps. Now that we know what a BPF is, let's try to understand why we thought it best suits our needs. As we said, there are several tracing technologies in Linux. Ptrace, for example, is used by strace to trace system calls performed by a process. Library injection is done by tools like Frida, where the injected library is part of the address space of the trace program. With kernel module, it is easy to hook and trace system calls from within the kernel. And eBPF, which is a relatively new technology in Linux, 
support tracing program that can trace far more than just system calls. Ptrace, as you can see, suffers from a lot of problems. It has bad performance and easily detectable and bypassable. For example, using Ptrace trace me or by looking for tracer PID in PROC self status. Using library injection is also easily detectable as the trace process can perform integrity check in its own address space, as well as manipulating the injected library data. Look, loading a kernel model, module could have been a good option, but not all environments allow to load a kernel module, and a single mistake in a kernel module can crush the whole system. This is where eBPF comes to the picture. It allows us to run code in the kernel in a safe way. So what is Tracy exactly? Tracy is a container-aware system tracing tool, focused on malware-related behaviors. It is capable of tracing all processes in the system, or a specific PID, but other than that, you can also start Tracy without telling it what to trace, and it will automatically trace all the newly created processes or newly created containers in the system, thus making it easy to immediately trace whatever is necessary without any clutter. Using the eBPF technology of the Linux kernel, Tracy can trace selected system calls and internal kernel functions like LSM hooks. With Tracy, it is easy to filter a specific event or set of events according to predefined sets. Other than tracing, Tracy is also capable of capturing files written to disk or memory, executed files, and extracting binaries that are dynamically loaded to an application's memory. Using these capabilities, it is possible to automatically collect forensics artifacts for later investigation. So here you can see an example where we start Tracy without any arguments. By default, Tracy will only trace newly created processes. In the first example, you can see that the LFS command was called. Tracy gives a timestamp of the events, the user ID of the process that triggered the event, its command name, process ID, thread ID, return value if applicable, and then the event name and its arguments. The second example shows that we can run Tracy in a container mode. In this mode, regular processes in the system will not be traced at all. Instead, when a container is started, for example with Docker, Tracy will detect that and start tracing all of its processes automatically. Other than these two modes, Tracy is also capable of tracing all processes or containers in the system, or just sp tracing specific PIDs. To list the available events that can be traced with Tracy, we can just run it with the list flag. We then get a list where you will, will be able to see all the system calls plus some other events. These other events include some LSM hooks, for example, security BPRM check and security file open. Using these LSM hooks has some advantages over using execv or open system calls. Tracing open system call, for example, is exposed to a race condition where one, of the, one thread of a malicious process can, can call a system call while other thread tries to change the path string given to, to open using a pointer. We may read one value when tracing the system call while eventually the kernel will open a different file as a result of this race condition. Using LSM hooks on the other, on the other end, we can read internal kernel data structure and get the effective file name that was given to the kernel as an argument. Another advantage of, of hooking to LSM hooks is that we can extract the absolute file path given to the system call, even if, if only relative path was given. One more thing that you can see here is what we call sets. Using sets, you can trace a group of related events, for example, all the file system related events or all the process related events. This can be really helpful when you, when you know what you want to focus on and remove any other clutter. Tracy is capable of capturing files written to disk or memory. To do that, we give it the capture flag, telling Tracy to capture file writes. In the first example, we also use a filter as we don't want to capture all the written files, but only those written to the pseudo terminal. So we just filter using the PTS. Below you can see what Tracy captured. In the output directory of Tracy, you can see a file with a name matching the device ID and inode number of the file that was written. Printing the content, you can see the output of the ls command exactly as was shown in the terminal. 
Although there were several writes of LS, as you can see from the VFS write events above, only one file was created which contains the whole content that was written. As you can see in the output of Tracy, the VFS write event was triggered by LS, given the absolute path of the written file as well as the device ID and inode number. Using this data, we can correlate with other events such as security file open and security BPRN check, as you will see next in our demo. Another artifact which can be captured using Tracy is, is executed files. Using the, the capture exec flag trails Tracy to save all the files that were executed since Tracy was started. In the above example, you can see the security BPRM check event, which happens every time a binary is executed in the system. We used ls and ps commands in the background, and as you can see below, these executables were saved to the Tracy output directory. One last thing that Tracy can capture is the binary data of a dynamically loaded binary. In the above example, we use the file which was packed with the UPX packer. In addition to using capture mem, we ran Tracy with what we call security alerts to get alerts when a memory protection is changed in a specific way. There are four types of alerts that may be triggered, depending on the flags given to mmap and mprotect. The idea is to try to find memory regions that were mapped with write plus execute permissions or change permission, permissions to such value. In normal programs, text section will be marked as executable but not as writable. Also, data section will be set to writable but won't be executable. If we see both execute and write flags, it may indicate that the program is trying to dynamically load binaries into its address space. For example, a packer will store its data packed in the binary and unpack it to a memory region that has to be writable. It then will, will want to execute code from it, which will require it to, to set the memory region as executable. Usually, the packer will not keep the memory region both executable and writable, as this may cause the program to crash on an invalid write, or even be detected by anyone searching the Procafes for write plus execute permissions. We use this fact to save the binary data written to such memory region. When protection is changed and write permission is removed, we know that the data was written and we save it to disk, giving the saved file name as part of the out alert output. Having the saved text section captured, we can then perform further investigation on it. So enough talking, let's see Tracy in action. Idan will now show us a demo presenting some of Tracy's capabilities. Thanks Yaniv, and in today's demo we are going to analyze a multi-stage malware found inside a container. So, when we want to analyze malware inside a container, or basically uh, trace any container, we're just going to write the tracy command with the filter trace and then container. Then we're going to start and tracing only things that are happening inside a container. Now we're just going to run a container in a different uh, terminal, and then we can see the full trace of the container. The only problem is this is too noisy. So a better approach would be to just filter the command with, uh, we are adding a filter for execve, and then when we're going to run again the container, we'll see less noise and we'll see just the executions inside the container. Okay. This gives us a lot more cl clarity about things that are happening inside the container. We can see real quick that the entry point to this container is init sh, which is going to execute a binary name sbin, which is going to execute a file descriptor, which is something very weird. We are going to investigate it in a minute. And then we're going to see some payload executed, uh, echoed into a STD out, then we're going to see that payload being decoded with the base64 binary and then on tar so we can assume from all of that that this payload was a tar file and in the end we'll see that there is a cube binary that was uh, uh, written to disk that is being executed. Let's check if the cube binary is indeed part of the image. We are going to look for that image for the cube binary and yeah as we as we thought cube is not part of the image 
Let's see if sbin is part of the image. And yes, we can see that sbin is part of the image. Now let's get back to the, uh, the weird file descriptor execution that we saw earlier. So what we are going to do now, we are going to add a few more uh, events. We're going to add the memfd create. We're going to add the VFS write and security BPRM check. And what we're going to do is we're going to use those in order to, inv to investigate the fileless execution. So we're going to do that. Let's run again our container. stop our container now we can see that indeed there was a fileless execution because we see the usage of the memfd create syscall which will give us a file descriptor that points to a block of memory then we see a write into that uh, that block of memory and after that we see the execution and after that, we see again, there is the security BPRM check that happens every time we run the execv uh, command. We can see that the, the payload that was executed were indeed execve from memory. So the next thing we would like to do is we, to actually collect the, that block of memory that was written. And we can do that by adding a filter for capture. We're only gonna capture write and we are only going to capture writes that happening in memfd. Now we are going to do to execute the command one more time, then execute the container again. But now when we go to temp tracy out and then the name of the namespace, we are going to see that the file that was written to memory is now uh, was collected on the side and then we can just double check that we are talking about the right payload. We can see again the VFS write were written into device number one. We can see here dev one with the inode with the inode number of one one five five nine zero. You can see that one. So now we verify that we collected the exact write to that file descriptor. The next thing that we want to do in our investigation is we're going to check if there is an unpacking going on and we are going to use the security alert flag and to check the same logic that Yaniv explained earlier. We're going to write, run the container one more time. And now when we are looking after the decryption of the base64 encoding, we will able to see right here that after cube was executed, we can see that cube did uh, some sort of unpacking. We see a protection change in memory. We actually saw there was a region that was mapped to writable and executable, and then change into executable. And now what we would like to do is we, want, we would like to capture that payload as well. We are going to add capture mem this time. We're gonna run the container again. And this time, when we're gonna check in the same folder as before, now we see that there is a, two binaries that was written to memory, and now we can just verify which one was the one that happened in that unpacking. And then we can see that the binary that ends with 981 is the binary that was unpacked from the cube. Executable. And now that we have the unpacked binary, we can just go ahead and open it in Cutter and Ida and just start reverse engineering only the unpacked payload. Now let's do a quick recap. So what we saw is a Muchi stage malware that started from the binary SBIN, decrypted a payload and then executed it straight from memory by using the memfd syscall to get the file descriptor then writing the entire decrypted payload into that file descriptor and then running an execv on the file descriptor itself. Then this resulted in a new process that was executing straight from memory, which did another decryption that was the base64 that we saw. In the end, he wrote the Q binary into disk and the Q binary was also packed. And we saw that the mapsyscall uh, MAP and the mprotect uh, happening 
and we were able to collect that piece of memory uh, using Tracy and then we can we just started analyzing it and we were able to see the tsunami malware unpacked which is really cool considering we didn't need to do any reverse engineering in order to extract this payload. Thank you Idan for an interesting demo and as we just saw Tracy does a lot of things automatically However, there is still some room for improvement as we need to analyze the events and look for malicious behavior. A better approach will be to write scripts and tools on top of Tracy. For example, we can look for heuristics using a rule engine which will take the output of Tracy and match it with rules of known malicious behaviors. Another example to what can be written on top of Tracy is a process tree which can give better visibility and high level abstraction of the trace processes. So what's next? Further in our roadmap are the following. Rule engine, so just like we just said, we want to use behavioral signatures on events from Tracy to detect malicious behavior. This is already a work in progress, available in the repo of Tracy. BPF-LSM. On recent kernels, it is now possible to enforce policies using LSM hooks with BPF. We would like to try this using Tracy. We also want to add support for ARM64 architecture. As a future research, we want to use eBPF to detect privilege escalation, rootkits, and container escapes. Tracy is being actively developed and new features are added all the time. You are invited to ask for new features and contribute to the project. So this is the end of our demo. We appreciate your time and hope that you will find Tracy valuable as we do. Thank you.